Hello and good afternoon, CSI 157, Section 841 students at Anne Arundel Community College for the Spring 2014 semester. Today's tutorial video is going to cover Packet Tracer Activity 11.6.1.2, which is the Skills Integration Challenge and from the final chapter in this eight-week term. Okay, so as you can see here, we have an addressing table. And our scenario is that a network administrator has asked you to prepare a router for deployment. Before it can be connected to the network, security measures must be enabled on the router. In this activity, we're going to encrypt and configure strong passwords, and then we're going to use and configure SSH for remote access and demonstrate that we can access the router from the PC. So the first thing that we want to do is configure IP addressing on staff, which is the PC, as well as building 5 which is the router. So if I were to go ahead and pull up the configuration dialog for staff, we'll add in the IP address information. So the IP should be, and that's provided above in the addressing table, 10.10.10.2. And again it fills in the default subnet mask for a class A address because a 10 dot is a class A address. So we're going to change that because we can see it's a 255.255.255.0 or slash 24. So we'll make that adjustment. And the default gateway will be the router IP address, which is going to be 10.10.10.1. And there is no DNS server in our equation, as you can see. And so we're going to go ahead and leave that the way it is. So let's check and see. Now this should fail because we haven't configured the router yet. Let's confirm that it's not configured. So if we ping 10.1 or 10.10.10.1, we're going to receive timeouts. And as you can see, the ping isn't working because we haven't configured that router yet. All right, so let's go ahead and configure the IP on the router for gigabit Ethernet 00. So we're going to go ahead and go from user exec into privilege exec mode by typing EN, which stands for enable. From privilege exec, we're going to go into global config, and then we're going to go into interface config, and we want to configure interface gigabit ethernet 00. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring the interface up. I'm going to go ahead and type in IP address 10.10.10.1, and again, we have a class C subnet mask ap applied to a class A address. That's a slash 24, and I'll go ahead and add a quick description on here, and we'll just put gateway interface for LAN 10.10.10.0 slash 24. All right, so now we've configured that. So I'm going to type in, save our configuration. Now, can I ping the PC? Let's check and see if I can ping the PC, which is 10.10.10.2, and I can. And so that interface is now up. All right, so configure the host name, building five, and encrypt all plain text passwords. So the first task is a simple one. We simply want to change the host name to BLDG5 for the router, and we've done that. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to encrypt all plain text passwords. And so this is service password encryption. And so all of the VTY line passwords will now be encrypted. You'll not be able to see those in plain text. Okay, and it says set a strong secret password of your choosing. So we're going to do, um, let's see, for the password we can use, we'll do enable secret and zero because it's going to be plain text. And we'll use, um, basically we'll do Travis123. Not the best example, but we just want to make sure we get a password in there. So our enable secret password will be Travis123. Okay. So set the domain name to building5, and it's case sensitive. So we're going to go ahead and do IP domain dash name, and we're going to set it to BLDG5. All right. And the reason we're doing this is we're going to be generating uh, some RSA keys, and we need to make sure that the domain name is set for that. So it says create a user of your choosing with a strong password. So the username command is what we use to create users and so and these are local users on this router only so we have our username and then I'll do the password and it's going to be plain text and we'll set it to Travis123 as well again not the strongest of passwords 
you'll probably want to choose one that's a little stronger than that. All right, and so now we have our local username created. So if I do a do show run, let's see where these things show up. So here's the enable secret password, which is encrypted. And the username is right here, and that's also encrypted. And then let's take a look at the gig00 interface, where we configured 10.10.10.1. All right, and then we have the VTY lines at the bottom, which we haven't done anything with yet. All right, so now it says generate 1024-bit RSA keys. So it's crypto key generate RSA, and then we're going to hit enter, and it's going to ask us how many bits. So this is where we say 1024 bits. So I'm going to hit enter, and the keys have been generated, and they're non-exportable. All right, so block anyone for three minutes who fails to log in after four attempts within a two-minute period. So there's a lot going on and a lot being requested in this, uh, in this line here, in this requirement. And so what we want to do here is use the login block four command. So as you can see, it says time period in seconds. And actually, let me back up here. So if you take a look under login, right, you can see block four on failure and on success. So we're going to go ahead and do login block four, and it says block anyone for three minutes who fails to log in after four attempts within a two minute period. So block four would be 180 seconds. And then, oops, the attempts, right, simply be the number of maximum attempts, and we're saying that it's going to be four attempts, and then it should be within, and a time period in seconds and so within a two minute time period and that's it so again this command here is login block for 180 seconds and that's block anyone for three minutes is our requirement after four attempts which are unsuccessful within a two minute period and so we'll go ahead and set that and then it says configure uh, line the VTY lines for SSH access and require the local user profiles. Alright, and so the way we're going to do this, and again, this is not the console line, simply the VTY lines, because you cannot SSH or Telnet to the console line. So line VTY 0 15, and we're going to do input. Oops, sorry. Let's take a look at our options here. So you're going to do transport input, and the transport input will be SSH. And then you're going to use login. And early on in one of our videos, we talked about the difference between simply putting login and then hitting enter, which means you're going to be prompted for the password. But then you could also add login local. And what this is going to do is it's now going to look at the local users on the system, the one which we created earlier, with the name of Travis. And so we'll use the login local which is going to that satisfies the requirement of requiring the local user profiles to be used for access so login local all right so now i'm going to go ahead and type in end and if we do write mem you can see that we now have our configuration saved and let's go ahead and take a look over here we're going to check our results to see where we're at and it looks like we've got all items completed. So again, all items have been completed. Now what we need to do is we need to test our connectivity from the staff PC through the switch and into the router via SSH. And so for us to do that, so to do that, what we're going to want to do is run the following command. And let me exit out here. We're going to run ssh-l followed by the username that we created on the router, which is just simply Travis, and then the IP address of that router. It's going to say that it's open the connection. It's asking for our password, which is Travis123. And there we go. We are now on the router. So if I try to do a show run, I get invalid input because I'm in user exec mode. I can now transition to privilege exec mode, which is just Travis123, and now I can do my show run command. And so now I'm connected to the router via SSH. 
So let's see what would happen if I try to telnet to 10.10.10.1. And you can see it says it opens the connection on the PC, but the connection is closed by the foreign host because again, the transport input SSH is only allowing us to connect to this router via SSH. And so let's go ahead and confirm that. We'll do a little, little extra step here. So I'm back on the building five. So let's go conf T and we're going to go ahead and go line VTY 015. And I'm going to go ahead and type in transport input SSH and then telnet. Oh, so it doesn't look like telnet is an option. Let's see what they have down for options. Telnet is an option. And then, ah, so maybe it wants individual. So do, do show run, come down to the bottom. And it looks like it's only allowing us to put one in at a time. So as you can see, it changes it to telnet, not allowing us to put in multiple lines. And so there are some cases or some iOSs, and let me pull in uh, some actual routers here. So this is a uh, this is a switch here. Let's take a look at an 1841 router. And if I do a show run on an 1841 router, and we'll come down to the bottom, you can see where we have the login local. But let's go ahead and try to manipulate this, and we'll type in line VTY 015. And so then I'm going to put in transport input. And if I do the question mark, you can see we have many more options here because, again, this is a, a real router. And in fact, let me go ahead and do show version. And we're actually running 12428T8 software. So again, if I do transport input SSH and then do the question mark, you can see where we're prompted with additional options. So you can have more than one option. So I could do Telnet question mark. Um, and so now when I hit enter, this is a valid command. So from here, if I do a do show run, and we'll begin with um, con. Oh, it's going to start at the very top. All right, so we'll try and make our way down here. So as you can see, on actual real Cisco hardware, and this is an 1841 router, as you can see here, you can actually identify multiple input methods. Now, would you do Telnet and SSH? You might. So, but this is just to show you that you can have more than one. And Packet Tracer, unfortunately, again, is a limited version of the Cisco IOS. So when I do transport input, and you could see we could do all protocols, which would be SSH and Telnet. But typically on a real router, you would be able to pick from a larger number of options and select those options as you see fit, so, sort of in an a la carte fashion. So if I put all, now when I do a do show run here, you can see it just, it's gonna take anything. But if I only wanted to tell that an SSH, we would do transport input, and again, you would do SSH space telnet or telnet space SSH, and that will work in the real world. And so let me check on a this is a 3550 switch here, so we're going to go ahead and do line con, oops, sorry, line VTY 015. And I'm going to do transport input SSH. And then if I do the question mark, you can see we can pick from Telnet as well. So even on a 3550 switch, just like the router, we can pick down or uh, narrow our choices by sort of an a la carte fashion by picking the ones that we want to have show up. So again, Packet Tracer, I'm not taking, not to take anything away from Packet Tracer, it's a fantastic tool, but this is one instance where it's a little different than the real Cisco iOS. And so that's so that you know you can limit your selection of, um, of protocols you wish to use to connect. One final thing is when we generated our SSH keys, and let me exit out one more level here. If I do a show run here, um, I'm looking for, and I don't see it, it doesn't show up in the config, and that's the version of SSH. And so by default, it enables version 1.99. And so what you'd wanna do is you would wanna go ahead and you would wanna change that so IPSSH version, you want to make sure that you change it to version 2 because there are 
there are well-known vulnerabilities with the version 1.99 that it sometimes will uh, activate by default. All right, so this has been the Packet Tracer Skills Activity. Not, I'm sorry, 11.6.1.2, and these were all the completion steps. Uh, you'll see that we show 94 because of the transport input SSH has been changed. I hope you found this video tutorial uh, helpful, and uh, hopefully it'll help you in your studies, as well as the sort of real-world example of what it looks like on a real Cisco router and a real Cisco switch when you're setting your, your transport input statement. All right, I will see you all on Tuesday evening. Have a great night.